Okay, now let's look at how we can attach objects to our characters. So for the first example, we will look at a character who plays tennis. But he doesn't have a tennis racket in his hand. So we will learn how to attach the tennis racket to the character's hand. So I will open up a character here from my uh, folder 5, Parent-Child Constraints. So T pose 2, no animation. Well, he's actually not a, a tennis player, he's actually a soccer player. But we'll just go with this character for now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to characterize it. And I'm going to, again, uh, as always, rename it to something uh, descriptive. Okay. Now I'm going to bring in the the uh, motion file, which is playing tennis.bvh file right here. Okay. So I'm going to uh, characterize this bvh file as well. Characterize bypad and I'm going to rename it to PVH playing tennis. So uh, I'm gonna here set the character to the Brazilian player, and my source of animation will be the BVH file that says playing tennis. Okay, so when we look at this, you'll see that the animation is transferred to the uh, character, and he is nicely and gently playing tennis. Okay, so uh, what we need to do now is to bake the animation to the control rig so we can then later on um, animate the or modify the uh, hands or any kind of poses that we would like to. So I'm gonna go to the uh, this big blue button here, go to bake, uh, bake the animation to the control rig and FKIK. Okay, so as you see now the character has the uh, control rig. We can see it here as well. So when we play, it still has the animation. So now that the animation is baked into the control rig, we don't need this uh, BVH file anymore. So I'm going to go to my uh, schematic view by pressing Control W. Find my BVH file. I'm going to do this right here. Right click, um, delete, and Confirm. Okay, delete character, yes to all, and he's gone. And again, um, the animation is still uh, valid because it's in the control rig. Okay, now that we have the animation baked into the control rig, uh, now I can what I can do is I can bring in our prop, which is the tennis racket in this case. So I'm going to bring my tennis racket uh, FBX file, and it's this one right here. So I'm going to bring it here. And again, I'm going to use FBX merge uh, because I want to add the object to my scene. So no animation there. Okay, so as you can see, the record is uh, gigantic compared to the uh, character, but that's okay. We can always uh, make it smaller. So I'm going to use this, use uh, the translation tool. Okay, I'm sorry, not translation, but scale, because we're going to make it uh, smaller. There we go. Okay, so uh, I'm going to make sure that I'm in the first frame, and I'm going to attach the uh, the racket to his right hand in my first frame. So rotation tool. I'm going to bring it here. Translate. Okay. Again, this is still uh, very big, so I'm going to make it a bit smaller. Now, normally um, you should find a real racket or find a picture of um, a tennis player with a racket and see uh, how big or how small the racket should be compared to the uh, character. But in this case, just to be a bit faster, I'm going to um, eyeball it. So let me zoom in here. I think it's still... Uh, quite big, so I'm gonna make it smaller. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna.
I'm gonna use the um, schematic view, not schematic, I'm sorry, uh, orthographic view. So control F. Uh, you can also access it here. View uh, orthographic control F is right there. A producer back or front. Okay, so you can see uh, the height in a more clear way. Okay, so again, control E to go back to the um, perspective view. I think it's still a bit too big, so I'm gonna make it smaller. Okay, so I think this is roughly okay. Now, all I need to do now is to um, close the fingers so it can grab the uh, racket. And of course, to do that, I'm going to use the selection mode, rotation tool, and the additive mode. So this is the right hand of the character, so I'm going to go to this area, select all the four fingers, and close it nice and tight. Okay, so I think I'll choose the racket now here and bring it a bit to the uh, screen right. Okay, that's all right for now. You know, you can always uh, spend more and more time and try to perfect the, um, the, the grip. But I'm not going to uh, go into too much detail for now. Okay, but you get the idea. Okay, so what we need to do is go to the animation layers, click on animation layers, the, which is the um, uh, the empty layer. I'm going to right click, uh, rename that to right hand. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, move from the selection mode selection mode to the uh, the full body mode, and I'm going to give a keyframe here. Again, making sure that I'm on the empty layer. There we go. So now, uh, I'm sure that my uh, hand pose will stay the same for the rest of the, uh, the animation. So as you see, the only problem is when the character starts moving, the racket stays still. It doesn't follow the hand of the character. So that's where the parent-child constraint comes in. So we have to attach this uh, racket to the character's right hand. So to do that, what you need to do is go under templates, this time constraints, and if you scroll to the right, you will see the parent-child constraint. And the way it works is you just drag and drop this somewhere empty on the screen. Okay, so uh, here we have two options, the child object and the parent object. So we have to define for Motion Builder which object is the child and which object is the parent. In other words, which object is the controller and which object is going to be controlled. So in this case, uh, the racket is our object that will be the child because it will be controlled by the character. So I'm going to go to the blend root. This is the one. So I can just um, drag this and drop it on the child area here. Okay, now for the parent object, uh, in this case, the parent object will be the right hand of the character. So what you need to do for that one is you have to go to the uh, X-ray view here. I'm going to zoom here. Okay, so this is the right hand uh, bone. So you have to bring this to the parent uh, box here. So all you need to do is to click and hold the alt key and then click uh, again on the bone and bring it to the parent box so now we have defined what is our child object and what is our parent object okay but when you start playing 
you will see that there is nothing uh, changed. The reason why is because even though we defined the child and the parent objects, we haven't snapped them together or to each other. So to do that, what you need to do is come here and snap. Click on the snap button. Okay. Now, when we look at the animation, uh, you will see it here. Let's play. There we go. Now, the racket is um, following where the hand goes. Perfect. So this is basically how you can add a parent-child constraint to uh, your scene, to your objects. Now, as an animator, what you need to do is, um, after you attach it, you have to watch the rest of the animation and see if there's any problems. And fix them again using the animation layers, just like how we do it in the previous lesson. So, when I look at this file, or this animation, I realize that it's got some uh, problems like this one here as you see the racket goes through the character's hand so this is something that we need to fix okay so i'm not going to go through the um, animation or the motion cleaning part again because we have talked about it before but what you need to do is uh, in this case to be able to clean the data again is again to go to the big blue button here click and go to bake the animation to the control rig now that you've done that you're ready to modify this character. So for example, again I'm gonna go to the uh, the x-ray view and you can for example take this one, this hand here, use the T tool so you can take it maybe in a way that the racket doesn't go uh, through the hand. Okay, so you know how to do that using the animation layers. Now let's look at our second example. So for this example, again I'm gonna go to my uh, folder and in this case, we're going to use this file that says knife grab. It's an FBX file with motion this time. So when I bring it in, instead of saying no animation, I want to get all the takes because, again, uh, this file I know has animation to it. Okay. Okay. So this is basically a short uh, project that has the animation built into the character, and we even have a knife here. So uh, the animation here is that the character um, leans uh, down to grab the knife and then get up again. But the problem is, as you see, he doesn't uh, grab the knife. The knife stays on the floor. So what we need to do is, again, use the parent-child constraint and enable the character to actually grab the knife. Now the difference between this example and the previous one is in the previous example the character held the racket for the whole duration of the time. So the parent-child constraint was enabled for the whole duration. But in this case we don't want the parent-child constraint to be in use for the whole time. Instead we want the constraint to be active right after he grabs the uh, knife. Right around here. Okay, so how do we do that? Again I'm going to come down to the templates folder constraints and parent child constraint and again the step is to define the child and parent objects so I'm going to use uh, my knife object as my child object here and in this case again the right hand is the um, parent object so I'm gonna come here zoom in Okay. Click on this bone, press and hold the Alt key, and uh, click again and drag and drop it down to the parent box right there. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is to click on the snap. As you see, he can now grab the uh, knife. But the problem is, before he was supposed to grab the knife, the knife is still stuck um, to his hand. Okay. So that's not what uh, we want. Here what we need to do is to specify what frame the character is supposed to grab the knife. Okay, so in this case, let's see. I think 55 would be a good one. Okay, so up until a frame 54, 
we don't want this uh, parent-child uh, constraint effect to be active. But uh, frame 55 and on, we want the, um, the constraint to be effective. So how do we do that? If you remember from the uh, animation layers uh, lesson, we have this uh, option called weight. And weight is, as you remember, pretty much the same thing as layer opacity in Photoshop. So instead of opacity, the weight shows the, uh, the percentage of the effect that you're trying to do on specific layer. And the same thing for parent-child constraint. We still have the weight uh, option. So 100% weight means full uh, effectiveness of the parent-child constraint. And zero means no effectiveness of the constraint. Basically, do nothing. So uh, up until 54, we want this value to be zero. And do not forget, after you change the value or the property value here, you have to click on the keyframe icon. Without that, it's not going to store the animation. So on the next frame, which is 55, right here, I'm going to bring it down, bring it up to 100%. And I'm going to again click on the keyframe icon. So look what happens now. Now, right now, the parent-child constraint is not uh, active. It's not going to be active until frame 54. And right after uh, 54, on 55, he grabs it and then he gets up. So just by using the weight property and keyframing the value next to it, you can decide when you want the parent-child constraint to be in use and when not to be in use. And this was an overview of how you could use parent-child constraint. Next, we're going to learn how to add cameras and move them around in our scene.